Okay, these ladies have helped you become an expert in the basics of rabbits, housing them, feeding them, and even breeding them. Now we're going to talk about how to dispatch and prepare them. Have all of your things ready. Make sure all of your, your knife is sharp. Um, rabbit butchering is super easy. They're so easy to process compared so to chickens. So easy. So much it. easier than chickens. <laughs> It's very easy and I find it much, much easier than even butchering chickens. But figure out and be confident in whichever way you're going to dispatch. Let's do this thing. So there's many methods of dispatching your rabbits and these ladies are going to share their preferred method. Megan's going to go into detail about the broomstick method. I think the method that I'm going to try is going to be the hopper popper. Um, but even as we get into this, I'm excited for you to hear some of Donna's thoughts just on the whole butchering, dispatching process in general it's no small thing taking something's life and so it's our tendency i think to be tentative and gentle but this is the sort of time where you've got to just get in there and do it and not muck around because you don't want the rabbit suffering whether that's the choke chain method uh, the broomstick method um, a pellet or a 22 you'll want to make sure that you're confident in that um, personally, we've done the pellet, um, pellet 22 is preference. So we use cervical dislocation, most specifically called the broomstick method. Broomstick method, we don't use a broomstick, we actually use a piece of rebar and found that that was really effective. It means you can do it yourself. Um, it takes more confidence and skill, I think. It's very quick, it's very easy, and it's a good way to know that your rabbit's life ended immediately. We lay our rabbits down and put a stick about the size of a broomstick right behind their neck and then you pull their back feet and it dislocates their spinal cord immediately. So currently I use um, the hopper popper. I have been very interested in trying the choke chain. When I'm watching YouTube videos, I really like how quick it, it seems even faster than the hopper popper because with the hopper popper, you still have to kind of situate yourself for a second. You know, once they're dead, once you do the cervical dislocation, you've got all the energy in the body and so they're kind of kicking like crazy. Um, and I like to bleed during the kicking because that movement helps the heart pump out the blood. Now, a good way to know if you've got the job done, cervical dislocation, you know it because you can feel it separate. But in other methods, you may not know it. And so check, touch inside their eye right here. If they blink, they're not dead. I'm sorry. That's just the fact of it. We hang our rabbits up by their back feet and then we work our way skinning them down, of course, through the head immediately. All of the stuff that we don't save can go to our chickens. They'll eat that or go into our compost pile. Okay, so now that you've dis dispatched, what do you do next? So in this video, we're not gonna dive into a lot of the butchering uh, process specifically. I think the best video I've seen so far is the Living Traditions video on gutting your rabbit and processing it that way. So I would recommend you watch that video next. But now Megan and Charity are going to talk about the importance of letting the meat rest after you've butchered and the importance of brining. And Charity's going to give us our first rabbit preparation idea, followed by many more. And it is one common thing that freaks out a lot of rabbit owners is even after you skin that rabbit, you had that rabbit you've got your meat in your water cleaning it off, those muscles still may twitch. That is just their nerves firing and the electrical activity that naturally occurs in a body. And that is nothing you've done wrong. After butchering our rabbits, we soak our meat in water, a little bit of salt water for about two hours. Then I rinse it off and then I set it in a container in the fridge. You wanna let them chill for at least 24 hours until that rigor mortis has passed. We would store the meat in the refrigerator um, until the next day. Uh, you can do this before or after you break your rabbit down if you're wanting to cut it down into rabbit sections. It will make your rabbit meat more tender. Afterwards, you can use it immediately or then freeze it. I do wanna point out here really quickly two things. Do not thaw rabbit meat in the microwave um, it's not recommended. Do not leave it out like maybe you would leave a pack of steaks on the table or a sink. If you're going to thaw it out, uh, put it in the refrigerator to fully thaw or in cold water in the sink that you're going to immediately use after. Those are safe and approved. One thing I do wish somebody had told me earlier is everybody talks about how after butchering you want to put it in your fridge for 24 to 48 hours to let rigor pass, which is great. Um, some people suggested putting it in saline. Um, which is great, but, um, and one nice things that this two things that I like about the saline, um, that I do religiously now. And is that why when you have super, when you have a brine, when you have a heavy salt brine, 
it's not going to go bad, right? Because that salt is a preservative. And so you, if you get busy and you don't get around the, the putting that in your freezer, it, it's okay. Your meat's fine. Well, in, in light of that, um, I actually forgot a couple of them in the back of my fridge for like 10 days once. Um, until I was doing more rabbits, I was like, where's my pot? I found them and I was like, oh, well, we'll cook some for dinner. It was only like three o'clock. I was like, you know, rabbit, you usually need to cook longer because it's super lean. So if you want it to be moist and not dried out, you have to kind of slow cook it. Well, I took this rabbit and I started it in my oven. Okay. It had been in brine for a week or more. Um, I put it in my crock pot and, um, not my crock pot, my, um, Dutch oven stuck it in the oven. And I was just going to drop the temperature after an hour. And I was just going to make sure it was moist. So I, I pulled it out to put the liquid on and it fell off the bone, like a rotisserie chicken, best rabbit I have ever had. So that's what I'm doing now is, um, I'm, I'm putting them for between four to six days and I'm still experimenting with the perfect, perfect, you know, how long do I really have to let them sit to get that way? Um, and then I'll even put them in the freezer, but I've been able to chop them up and flash saute them in a, in a, in a, in a stir fry and then be just as moist and tender as the stupid, tender, nasty chicken from the grocery store. Often what we would actually do is just bone out all the frames and mince the meat because I found that ground meat was way easier to use. Uh, we could make bunny patties and um, stuff like that and the family really happily ate them. The whole family got involved trimming the meat off and then the frames we would feed raw to the dogs um, over the coming weeks. We would store them in the freezer. Um, another thing I liked to do was put them in a pot and slow cook them with some feta, some tomatoes, some rosemary and some olives. I don't know if it's got a name but it was really good. <laughs> Um, curried rabbit is also really nice. Rabbit also works very similar to chicken and recipes and you could cook it basically like chicken. My favorite way to do rabbit is to do an apricot glazed rabbit. I break it down into all of its pieces, two front legs, two hind legs, and its tenderloin, which is also the spine area. And then I will bake it and coat it in an apricot glaze. Additionally, you can do a rabbit stew. I do a basic stew cooked in chicken stock or rabbit stock if you have it, different vegetables, the rabbit and herbs and stuff like that. And it is fantastic. You can do fried rabbit, one of our favorite ways. Uh, we also do bunny tacos. That is my favorite thing to do with canned rabbit because it is perfectly shredded. I just heat it up in a pan with some taco seasoning and it makes delicious tacos. Rabbit is very, very lean. It does not have any fat, so you will want to add additional fat to it when you're cooking it to keep it from drying out. Also, because it is so lean, it is very, very good in a sauce. A sauce on it, oh man, it is perfect for rabbits. I personally like it barbecued. I like uh, rabbit noodles in the crock pot, but I prefer everything in the crock pot. Anything you can do with poultry, you could do with rabbits. You just want to keep that meat moist. Uh, lots of people will use bacon or butter and things like that. The rabbit just has more flavor to it than chicken. So think like a dark meat chicken thigh with just a little more flavor, but nowhere near as greasy. There's a ton of recipes you can find on that. Um, in my book, I have recipes in the back. It takes a little bit of experimenting to figure out your favorite way to cook rabbits. Just know you want to cook them to 160 degrees to make sure that everything in them is cooked through and nothing left is raw. I've never heard that you have the same risk with chicken like salmonella. Rabbits don't really get that. So you don't really have that risk, but I always make sure when I feed my family rabbits that it is cooked all the way through. So, so far, I've, we've only really had crock pot rabbit or have it, had it in stews. So I'm really excited to try the brine that Charity talked about and maybe even grinding it up into meat patties like Donna talked about. Thanks for coming along. Check out one of the other ladies' channels. Subscribe to me if you're interested. And next time we're gonna talk about common diseases and illnesses and injuries that rabbits experience and what to do about it.